impossible! No! No! Journalism is one of the highest callings one can have. To inform others. To shed light on misdeeds. What? Happened. If you told me back in 2015 after the release of Arkham Knight that Rocksteady's next title released nine years later Okay, let me rephrase title that people actually played Would be so heavily lambasted way even before the game actually launches And then if you told me that it was 100% deserved I would have thrown a batarang at your temple and put explosive gel on your front porch This studio that had made not only some of the best superhero games ever But one of the best trilogies in gaming history Arkham City to this day is the greatest superhero game ever made And I will fight anybody on that <laughs> There is no possible way that a studio that we held in such high esteem would ever fall to such dastardly depths that you say. But lo and behold, here I sit, nine years later, and the only word I have to describe Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is baffling. I am baffled by every single decision made with this game. I am baffled by how bad the mission design is. I am baffled by the incompetently written story. I am baffled that this looter shooter has loot that may actually put you to sleep. And most of all, I am baffled by how this developer treats the actual Justice League, especially the character that put them on the map. Rocksteady, why? Just. Why? Surprisingly, the only thing I'm actually not baffled by is the fact that this is a live service game. Because in order to be baffled, you need to actually be questioning why something happened the way it did. And I would say that Rocksteady is the latest developer to drink from the live service poison pool, but it's pretty clear that Warner Brothers shoved their head in the pool and said, Eat your soup, Billy. You're not bringing in enough dough. Because when you play this game, it is apparent that the developers had no idea what they were doing at all with the core systems and that bled into everything else associated with it. I won't say it's a total disaster because for me, in order to go that low, your game needs to be buggy and just not finished, which this time it's not. It's actually pretty polished. <laughs> that was taken care of in early access. But enough rambling. ZD, give us some examples. How has Suicide Squad killed the Justice League I'm sorry, I'm just gonna call it Suicide Squad from now on. I'm not saying the full title every time. How is it so bad, and why does everybody hate it? Well, welcome to therapy, everyone. So strap in, boys and girls, and let's get down to business. Before we get into the actual game, we need to mention the lead up to launch and just the overall marketing for this game. I have never seen a triple A release, at least not this high profile, where the lead up to launch doesn't have a single positive thing said about it. The mere announcement that Rocksteady's next game would be a live service made all of us want to throw up for five minutes. It doesn't help that the game just didn't look good in the trailers. It just looked like a generic third person looter shooter that we all played before and hated. Spoiler alert, not much has changed. The showcase at Sony's State of Play in February 2023 was so poorly received that it caused Rocksteady to delay the game for a full year. Which actually, I'm gonna give them some credit for. If you show people a snippet of what your game is gonna be, and everyone universally says, That is one big pile of shit. Stepping back and taking the time to reassess why people think it's so bad is the best decision you could make. I don't know what they did with that extra year, but you gotta commend them in some way. But probably what soured people the most out of all of this was Warner Brothers' refusal to give out review codes, specifically to IGN, who did something that is getting me pretty scared that we are at the end times. They played a game in a preview and didn't like it. Welcome to the rest of us. Now listen, I don't like IGN. I never have liked IGN. I think the majority of their big budget game reviews are solely there to massage developers so they can improve their standing with them. That 10 out of 10 they gave Deathloop to this day is still the most baffling score I've ever seen a reviewer give out. Killed themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Team, <laughs> Team America. Yeah. <laughs> That's what nice. they need. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what the word of the day is. You want to see the gaming disconnect? Look no further than IGN. However, people celebrating that they didn't get a review code 
aren't seeing the bigger picture here. Not giving out review codes to outlets is a bad thing. Now they're not entitled to a review code, that's the publisher's decision. Id Software did the same thing with Doom Eternal, but early reviews give the consumer a chance to see what they're getting into, because these games are now $70. It helps to know how good the game actually is before you buy, and not giving them out looks worse when your game continues to look terrible every time it rears its head to show a preview. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know what that tells people. But you know what? Despite all of the negative reception at every turn, I still wanted to try. I still wanted to give the game the benefit of the doubt because after all, Rocksteady has more than earned that privilege. But the more I played it, the more I realized that negativity was well deserved. So if you couldn't discern the plot by just looking at the title, you play as B and C list villains, Deadshot, Harley Quinn, King Shark, and Captain Boomerang, who are approached by Jedi Master Seer Junda, who tells them that they have to find a Jedi holocron that will reveal the location of several escaped younglings and Oh, sorry, wrong game. I am Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. Commander Amanda manages to trick the dumbasses into injecting themselves with nanobombs that put them under the control of Argus, forcing them to do their bidding or else- My patience is shot with this performance. You soon make it above ground. <laughs> Welcome to- <laughs> Baldur's Gate? Yo, the Absolute got an upgrade. Metropolis is under siege from the otherworldly being Brainiac, who unfortunately has managed to brainwash the entire Justice League, who have literally become the faces of evil. Green Lantern just watches as civilians get gunned down. These resistors just don't respect martial law. It becomes clear that the reason the Suicide Squad was busted out is to kill the Justice League. We're not gonna find a way to break the brainwash? No. All right. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That's for later. Now, do I think that Suicide Squad is the worst game ever made? No. I personally think it's better than Marvel's Avengers as far as superhero live service games are concerned, but that bar is so low that you gotta dig a trench to find it. Hey Stanley, what would you give the game? Zero! Oh, come on, man, it's not that bad. But what if I told you that the first two hours are actually pretty fun? Aside from the tutorial, th that part sucks. Yeah, combat feels frantic, the gunplay doesn't blow your balls off, but it's pretty good. Each character also gets different traversal methods. Deadshot gets a jetpack, King Shark leaps into the stratosphere, Captain Boomerang has a modified Speed Force gauntlet where you can throw his boomerang and instantly zap to it, Harley Quinn can't figure out if she's Batman or Spider-Man, and let me tell you something, Deadshot and King Shark are fun as hell to play as. Deadshot especially, because his melee attack is just him doing an unnecessary cartwheel while firing his wrist cannons, and zooming around pulling that out to then switch to your gun and light enemies up. When you get into a flow with him, you get into a flow. It also helps that when you're in the air, he remains in the air because of his jetpack while you're aiming, which gives you so much freedom when positioning for firing. King Shark is all about pouncing around the battlefield, which just feels great. I mean, in the trailers, everybody pretty much figured that he was going to be the most fun to play as. And while I personally don't think he's the most fun, he is pretty damn fun. They were right about that. Him and Boomerang have melees that launch enemies into the air, allowing them to be juggled for more gun combos. Listen, I'd be lying if I said this wasn't satisfying. On the flip side, my god, Harley Quinn got shafted. You can swing around with the grappling hook and grapple to launch points like in the Arkham games, but this does not flow with combat at all because the action has to stop, wait for Harley to get there, and then she can shoot. Her melee is also not even good, at least compared to the others, so she doesn't even have that working for her. It sucks that her defining trait involves halting combat, and it doesn't even give you a good read on the enemies because you still fall down, so I <laughs> can't keep this guy in my sights. Maybe this is one of those hard to learn characters and some people may make a great build with her, but everything she can do, Deadshot can just do better. Much, much better. Same thing with Boomerang. He's not bad, but it feels like he's just a watered down version of King Shark. But overall, you know what? The first two hours to me felt great to play, just despite what you might hear from other people. And I even like the shield harvesting mechanic because you only can regain health by killing enemies that have a blue aura around them. It forces you to actually play the game, which I can really appreciate. All of this seems good, but then you keep playing and everything starts to feel the exact same. Because aside from their traversal, shooting feels the exact same for every single character. 
aside from whatever gun you decide to use. The act of shooting feels identical to every character because it is identical to every character. Because of the live service looter shooter model, you are always gonna be shooting guns. So nothing feels unique. Yeah, every character gets their own traversal attack, but they all do the same thing. A massive AOE blast with different coats of paint. And it's not like each character is limited to one choice, like Captain Boomerang doesn't have to just be the shotgun guy. I chose to have him like that the whole game, but if I really wanted to use the shotgun, I could have just put it on Deadshot. I even had the shotgun as a secondary weapon for King Shark, so that pretty much made Boomerang expendable. And that's the point I want to get across. You have so much freedom with your builds that everyone eventually starts to feel the same because anybody can use any gun. So if the only thing that feels different is how the characters move around, then I'm just gonna pick the guy who has the best movement in combat, which in my opinion, hands down, was Deadshot. There is no incentive to play as anyone else besides the moment where a character is psyched up. Yeah, about that. For every mission, one of your party members will be psyched up, which means if you play as them, they'll do more damage to enemies and earn more XP. Sounds great, right? There's that incentive to play as different characters. Well, there's just one problem with that. The XP is just for that character. It doesn't transfer to any of the other members. What? So, I have to play a mission as Harley Quinn to get psyched up, but she's the only one who benefits from the rewards, and I don't want to play as her outside of the missions that she gets psyched up for, so why the hell would I want to do that when I can just get the XP for the character I already like playing as? And it's not like their AI being a low level is going to impact how combat goes. They never die, so I don't have to worry about having to constantly go back and revive them, which I guess is a good thing. I'd rather that than the former, but I'd rather just use the character I'm comfortable with, and it's not like I'm losing out on anything if I don't use them during the missions. Oh god, the missions. Well, great transition, I guess. You want to know what you're going to be doing in Suicide Squad? Destroying shield generators, protecting energy crystals, and then destroying those energy crystals. Protecting poison ivy's plants. Finding civilians and bringing them back to the battle bus. Thank the bus driver. Collecting drop data for killed enemies and bringing it back to the battle bus. Thank you, bus driver. Escort completely non-conspicuous vans while occasionally defeating hordes of enemies. Two missions involving throwing an enemy inner at cannon legs. Uh -huh. And occasionally destroying enemies with a flying car. Seven mission types for the whole game, main and side. That's it. And those last two rarely happen, so you pretty much only had five missions. Five types of mission layouts every single time. This is not like exclusively side missions. Every single mission you do falls into one of these mostly five categories. Each one of these have you doing, you guessed it, killing hordes and hordes of enemies. Remember that cycle of dependency I talked about in my Dark Souls video? That could be applied to any video game, in the case that even though I was having fun with the gameplay of Suicide Squad for the first two hours, good gameplay doesn't mean anything if the mission design is repetitive, boring, and just becomes a slog to play through. And that is exactly what Suicide Squad becomes, a slog. I don't know what Rocksteady's mission designers were doing for seven years, but the fact that this is all you could come up with is completely unacceptable. I'm trying not to compare this game to the Arkham series because those are two completely different types of games, but remember the cool amount of side missions in Arkham City? Finding spare containers of Titan while teaming up with Bane? The Victor Zaz cold calls? Where after you stop a murder, you trace his location while hearing about his life story? Two different murder cases involving Hush and Deadshot, the latter of which you have to track a bullet trajectory from a far off location? And that's not even counting one-offs like the Mad Hatter or finding Mr. Freeze's wife. These were amazing. They had cool DC villains involved. It was dark and gritty. It got you invested and made you want to find everything here. In Suicide Squad, you kill enemies, destroy the crystals. Kill enemies, collect their data. Kill enemies, save poison ivy. Kill enemies, off you go, sweet tooth. Kill enemies, save civilians. Kill enemies, destroy civilians. Shit, crystals. Kill enemies, save poison ivy. Kill enemies, save civilians. Hey, Rocksteady, I got a question for you. Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Oh yeah, side note, you know that save civilians mission? You use the shrink ball to put the civilians in and they just disappear before you can release them to the bus. Because for some reason, we can't carry them to the bus. Have you seen the size of King Shark? I probably just didn't want to animate it. I guess. Oh yeah, and for the missions I played, we save actual civilians, penguin thugs, and Argus agents. But no matter what type of people they are, they're always referred to as civilians. Every time. What is this, Godzilla? One generator has been destroyed. Generator! It's not a generator! It's a fucking submarine, you dumb bitch! 
and right around the halfway point, you get to the escort missions. And this is probably how the pitch meeting went. All right, waiter, I want you to bring us one escort mission, and then one more every five minutes until one of us passes the fuck out. <laughs> Way to provide us an indicator that you completely ran out of ideas, Rocksteady. But okay, the missions are repetitive, but I'm sure there's a ton of enemy variety, right? No! You got purple boys, blue boys, and yellow boys. The only difference is that one of them has to be meleeed before you shoot them, and the other one is a brute. There's no thought on how you approach them. Just do the prerequisite, find the purple critical point on their back, and boom, you're done. You see a sniper in the distance? Counter as soon as you see the indicator. Counter any time you see the indicator. This is what you get to do over and over and over and over again. And when you got structures like cannons, choppers, and tanks, just find the purple weak points and fire away. Towards the end, there's one, maybe two new variants like soldiers with super speed or choppers with protective green lantern armor. But this is the exact same enemies, just with different buffs. This is not engaging to do the entire game and you feel it while playing. Like, can I get a crazy moment like in Remnant 2 where a mini boss will just show up anywhere? Like out of nowhere? Oh, but don't worry, we got a way to spice things up. I introduce to you... Support Squad Missions! No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! What are those, you might ask? Well, these are missions that you'll undertake for various characters in your hub area. But the catch is... The enemies now can only be killed in a certain way. You serious? Here are some of the conditions. Kill enemies that are afflicted. Kill enemies via shield harvesting, via critical hits, via counters, via vehicles, and worst of all, only being able to kill enemies using damage boosts that are dropped from terminauts. So if you can't meet any of those conditions, <laughs> nanomachine, son, this sucks. This absolutely sucks. It's one thing if these were like combat trials where it tests your ability to kill enemies in a certain way, that I'd be fine with, but not part of the actual side missions? You wanna make the experience drag even more? This is how you do it. Oh, but these are new types of missions, right? No, these are the same missions you've been doing the whole game! Now just with conditions! Are, are you kidding me? This just sucks, especially during the rescue civilians part, because for some reason the scanner just doesn't pick up a new civilian until you've killed a certain number of enemies. I, I guess it just runs on the blood of aliens. So if you're having problems finding that weak spot as Harley Quinn, well, <laughs> you're gonna be here a while. I don't think you understand how bad this slows down combat, but this is a live service game. They make money off how much time you spend playing, so it's a win for them! Yay! God help me. So let's do some rapid fire cleanup before we get to the story. This, of course, is a looter shooter. So, how is the loot? Well, you know, these guns are a bit shit. The actual guns you get in this game look so generic, if not things you could pick up for 10 bucks at Toys R Us. There was not one time I got a new gun or a new shield mod and I was like, oh my god, this looks freaking cool. Not once. Now you get these guns after completing a mission, so they don't just drop randomly in the world, which is an interesting concept. Less clutter. Let's see how this goes. But the reveal animations are so dull. A different color light flickers on a loot crate and boom, there's your gun. That's it? It doesn't even change based on rarity. Same underwhelming animation every single time. Also, this might be a hot take for those who are more hardcore looter shooter fans or just fans of loot based games. I hate that there are times when a high tier weapon does less base damage than a low tier weapon or a piece of gear. If you're more rare than some sex toy I find in the street, I expect you'll at least do more base damage as a legendary than an uncommon. I know there's other passive perks attached to it that may make up for it, but if that little green arrow isn't there, I'm not considering it. With every bad game comes, of course, clunky UI. So many of the options here look just exactly the same. And have you seen the main menu before you start a playthrough? What the hell kind of layout is this? The designers are probably like, ah, these guys are only gonna see this once. <laughs> But we don't have to make this look good. This is the first thing you see. I have a bad feeling about this. And get this, you know when you get something new in game and you have this yellow dot that indicates where the new thing is? Yeah, when you get a new costume in Suicide Squad, it'll have the yellow dot on outfits, but not on the version of the outfit. So you have to go into each one and find which one is new. Sticking with quality of life, really nice how you have my equipped gun picture also part of the equipable guns menu. Great. 
great. Love that. Not confusing at all. What does quality of life mean again? Being a live service game, you of course have challenges that you compete for more XP and crafting components. Now, how do I know they're crafting components? Well, you don't know. Not until you lock the ability to craft and it says you need X amount of blue thing. It's like this thing has been on my UI for the whole game and I have no idea what it is. I'm not even sure they're given names. It's just yellow component, blue component, purple component. What the f***? What are these, Rocksteady? There's no indication in your menu that these are even crafting components. <laughs> really? I didn't mention this at the start, but the facial animations and graphics for this game look amazing. Motion capture for everything is crisp, the performances are great, for the most part. All of this is pristine. And then you look at Lois Lane on the Jumbotron in Metropolis, and it's like, what the hell is this? Hey guys, I'm gonna tell you three ways I use generative AI powered by Adobe Firefly oh my God, to make enough my creative this ad. even better. How does everything in the game look so good, and this looks like it was made by a first year intern? D did they run out of time? Yeah. Probably. You also got a skill tree, of course, because any game that doesn't have one is trash and no one wants to play it. But this is one of those skill trees that only doles out passives. Putting aside the potential funnel into one kind of playstyle, it doesn't even feel like I'm getting anything good from this. And nothing feels different, except sometimes there's a blood filter on King Shark. Oh, and you unlock your suicide attack, which is basically a gigantic shield harvest. Oh, God. If I feel the exact same way from the beginning of the game to the end of the game, your skill tree sucks. Also, I haven't seen anyone bring this up, but those cinematics you get when you get a meaningful upgrade, number one, the gun is the only thing on the model that looks like it's moving, but once the enemies are dead, there's this awkward last few seconds where the character just stands around and sometimes walks backwards. For anyone who's done video editing, this is the part where we would cut the clip because it wouldn't make sense to just leave it in the video. It would just look weird. This, this is just sloppy. These aren't big problems with the game, but they're just little sprinkles of evidence that the devs just didn't have enough time to fine tune their work, which is weird when your game is in development for seven years. Of course, your skill tree is provided by Hack, one of many support squad members at your hub world. These guys do things like give you the ability to craft guns, we really brought Penguin back for this. Change the mods on your guns. And of course, craft afflictions from good old Poison Ivy. Yeah, minor spoiler, Poison Ivy is back. This time as a young child. And she gives you weapon afflictions, which if you hold down the right trigger or whatever the respective key is on PC, you can launch different element AoEs like ice, fire, frenzy, and shock. Um, need I remind you this is coming from Poison Ivy? So, uh, it's really weird that there's no affliction for, you know, poison? How did nobody at Rocksteady think of this? You somehow gave this girl the ability to create ice, fire, and electric damage, but not the condition that is the premise of her whole character? You were telling me you couldn't implement a poison mechanic where enemies slowly take damage over time? Oh, Frenzy has some green mist. That's poison, right? No, Frenzy just makes enemies attack each other. That's not poison. You know how I mentioned the game was baffling? This is one of those moments. <laughs> but enough of that. You wanna talk baffling? It's time to talk the story. So, here we go. We're entering spoiler territory, so if you don't wanna hear what happens, skip to this timestamp. Alright. Let's roll. So when it comes to the story of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, I tried my hardest to avoid all the leaks and spoilers that came out pre-release, and I mostly avoided all the big ones. There were some I heard of, but only in bits, so everything I saw in the story was more or less a first look. And let me tell you something, if you're a DC fan in any capacity, this is gonna piss you off. And if you're an Arkham fan, this is gonna make your blood boil. It turns out, I just so happen to be an Arkham fan. Yeah, this game takes place in the Arkhamverse, meaning this Batman you see is Arkham Batman, the same one we played as for years. Let me start off with this. The first, I'd say, half of the game, the story is actually not that bad. I'm not with everyone online who says that it's good or even great. In my eyes, it was harmless. The way they set up the Justice League at the start, making them feel larger than life, and then seeing them do what they do in game, it really makes you feel like you are dealing with just insurmountable odds, especially as B and C list villains. 
Even Wonder Woman, who in this case is not even controlled by Brainiac. Everything they did with Wonder Woman, perfect. Setup, personality, everything, just perfect. She gives off this aura compared to the Suicide Squad that's just like, go home kids, let the grown-ups handle this. It should be in a sword, not a shield. You saw the massacre upstairs. And the museum scene with Batman was as expertly done as it could have been. Now being controlled by Brainiac, he's become a killing machine. Mangling bodies, stringing corpses up, cops have batarangs in their necks. The entire sequence is a giant callback to the Arkham games, retelling the story from each. To the asylum to terrorize it as Joker's sidekick. Hmm, every gal has a phase they regret. Maybe mine happened to get me consecutive life sentences. Ugh, remember when we had good games? It even explains the end of Arkham Knight, and it also comes complete with Batman taking everybody down in the same manner you did in the games. So, guess what? Now you're the target. How you feel about it? Go look out for number I want, I guys! Including with explosive gel. Also, the designs of everybody look amazing. It was truly set up to be a cool little adventure, but as I said, the story was okay. Not bad yet, but okay. The reason why I say that is because of the Suicide Squad themselves. I'm sorry, these guys are pathetic. Now, I know there's gonna be DC fans that are like, oh, ZD, that's the whole point. They're pathetic villains put into unwinnable situations. Yeah, being pathetic might work at the start, but eventually those pathetic characters have to blossom into confident badasses. The problem is, that doesn't come until the game is pretty much done. So until that point, you have to make your characters likable in some way but instead they're turned into an incompetent comedy show. How am I supposed to root for something like that? Yet again, your feeble upper body strength betrays you, Boomerang. Shark, hold up, it's a- Harley, get us out of this! Harley, Harley, do not touch us. But you saying I can't really makes me want to, you know? <laughs> no! Harley, no! no. Uh. Worth it! The biggest slight is Deadshot. Why is the world's greatest assassin such a wuss? I try to remember, since this is in the Arkhamverse, would Deadshot in Arkham City be like this? And when I went back and played it, maybe, just just the slightest, maybe. But if we're going with Will Smith's Deadshot, the cold-hearted badass that was shown in the movie and in Justice 2, then why the hell is this guy scared of the dark? Uh, what? Shut up, shut up, shut up, just shut up! I hate small spaces, I hate losing, I need air, and I'm stuck in here with you assholes! How the hell did this guy survive in Arkham? Also, when Wonder Woman gets mad at them, they throw King Shark and Harley into a tankard. He, along with Boomerang, just walk in like children going to a timeout. Like, yeah, I could see that for Harley Quinn and Boomerang, but this guy is supposed to be a badass and he's portrayed as nothing but a coward. I will say the banter between the group for the most part is pretty good. Open to any last minute brilliant plans. Just shake the bloody thing. The bullets would just bounce back and kill you. Don't second thought. Shoot away, Boomerang! I will never get tired of hearing Tara Strong as Harley Quinn. You guys were all, let's get the bombs out! Let's remove the bombs! And now we're not doing it. What gives? Okay, so are we gonna do the murder each other thing or what? Cause I'll be straight with you. I'd kill anyone to get out of here. I'd kill you. I'd kill myself. Nobody's killing anybody. And Samoa Joe as King Shark, who is pretty much the equivalent of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy, is the best character by far. Eddie Nigma. Enigma. Oh, I am delighted by riddles and brain teasers. That artillery platform is lowering the value of the local real estate. No, not the property values. Man, this dude can do no wrong. But this banter between the group, at least to me, didn't make them likable. It was just, oh, that's a funny line. Oh, hey, that's another funny line. Not once did I find myself rooting for anyone, especially when they were going up against the freaking Justice League. Gone to hell when you went. Really? Why don't you just mail me the bullet? Worst of all, I'm sorry. Captain Boomerang 
is the most insufferable main character I have played as in a video game in a very long time. I'm not blaming the voice actor, but for the love of God, his voice is grating. Real survival is this. So he drank his own urine. Ah, uh, big deal. Who hasn't drunk their own urine? What are we waiting for? Ice time! Ice time! Ice time! Guys, they must have plugged hack into a bigger internet. She's flaming massive! Stupid asshole train! Stupid brain bombs! Stupid deal! Hall of Justice? Oh, more like bloody Hall, hall of... Hall, hall of... Hold the bullshit! Shut the fuck up! I think I'm in the minority here because I haven't heard anyone else talk about this. But having to hear this guy butt in every time, boy, after this I'm gonna go out for some shrimp on the Barbie. As soon as I kill the flesh, mommy will deliver some shrimp to your house. Hassan's got missiles. It's not funny. It's fucking annoying. Like, do you have only one volume? Stop talking like that. Well, PS5 controller still sucks. There were two quips out of the whole game he had where I actually thought was funny. One of them in the beginning where he points out that Deadshot's supposed to be white, which he was in Arkham City. And the other when Superman shows up, which I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty good. Yeah, go Superman! Oh fuck, it's Superman! But aside from that, every time this guy opened his mouth, I wanted to reach into the TV and choke him out. And that's not even mentioning what he does in the game, which we'll get to, trust me. Actually, let's hit that right now, shall we? As the title suggests, you have to kill the Justice League, which some people are upset about, which, yeah, I am too, but I'm not one of those people like, you can't kill the Justice League. I'm bummed I have to do it, but I'm not pearl clutching. However, if you are going to kill the Justice League with characters that have been presented as a comedy show, you better handle their deaths well, because making the characters you're playing as compelling hasn't been working so far. So if they're gonna go out, have them go out with a bang. That's what you have to do. What you don't do is what Rocksteady did. First off, the fights themselves suck. The first two against Flash and Green Lantern have lead-ups that are pretty much pointless. In order to fight the Flash, you need to get a hold of this speed decoupler that supposedly slows him down. You spend a handful of missions figuring this out, but for the fight, all you do is just counter-shot him when he launches his attack. And this apparently builds up the speed force decoupler, which is just the meter that determines the damage multiplier, so I have to do this thing that I've been doing all game, so why the hell did I need to find this speed thing in the first place? Don't give me this passive effect crap. There's no gameplay function to this thing. It just gives you the ability to unlock this boss fight. S seriously, who okayed this? It was me, Barry. You know, that actually makes a lot of sense. Same thing with Green Lantern. You can't damage his constructs until you get this yellow lantern chip, which allows you to actually shoot his constructs. <laughs> so the thing, the thing I couldn't do before, now I can do it. <laughs> What the hell changed gameplay-wise? Nothing! Forget Batman and Superman's fights, those were just thrown together last minute. Hey Jimmy, what was your favorite part about Superman's boss fight? My... my, my favorite part about S S Superman's boss f f fight w was when I could a a actually see him. So the fights all suck, that's bad enough, but how they handle their deaths? Oh, that's worse. First up, when you kill the Flash, his body just keels over, and the Suicide Squad take a respectable approach at first because the Flash saved them from Green Lantern earlier before he was fully taken over by Brainiac. But if you weren't mad by now, while everybody is gathered around Flash's corpse, Captain Boomerang whips out his cock and pisses on him. Some fucking balls, you know that? Wow, that was a really disrespectful act you just did. Suicide Squad, what's your reaction? Show a little class, man. That... Holy shit. Congratulations. Made sense. The gods have cursed you in every other way. This was all a setup for a dick joke? Fuck you! 
You're trying to make me like these characters that I have to play as for the whole game. When you're trying to do that, you don't have them turn around and do something disrespectful like this. You can do this if they're straight villains, but you're not presenting them as such, so they just look like assholes. Also, this is being done to a superhero who's not in his right mind. He's brainwashed. And it's especially messed up considering the fact that he saved your life earlier. And when you do this too, you certainly don't have his peers brush it off as soon as they see the size of of his pecker. That's what the Flash was used for? Oh, but we're not done yet. Upon killing Green Lantern, King Shark puts on his ring and momentarily becomes a Green Lantern. Now, I'm not a hardcore DC lore expert, but I'm pretty sure that's not how the ring works. Not everybody can just put it on and become a Green Lantern, and they certainly can't riff on the oath. And it's not like King Shark is pure enough to be chosen as a Green Lantern. So uh, chalk this one up to the writers not understanding the lore of the universe they're writing a video game for. I would tell you what happens to Superman if something actually happened. He just, he just dies. That, that's it. You kill him and two seconds later, immediately on to Brainiac. What the, what the hell? You just killed Superman. We're not gonna address this at all. He's, he's not gonna get something to say. No. Oh, okay. But if you thought it was bad enough, I saved the best for last, ladies and gentlemen. How do they handle Batman's death, you ask? The character that gave Rocksteady their standing in the same universe, this is the same guy. How do they handle his death? Well, after his boss fight, in which he also keels over, Harley jokingly tries to carry his unconscious body around back to Luther. You drag him off to a park bench, and you want to know what happens? Does he get heroics like what Wonder Woman got? Does he get a moment where he somehow comes back to his sense briefly like the Flash got? No. Instead, they do this. Are we done with your bad stand-up routine? Almost. But you always gotta end on your best joke. You're telling me this is how you send off Arkham Batman, a man who we played as since 2009. F you. We barely see this guy all game. Hell, we haven't seen this guy since 2015, and his boss fight is reduced to a shitty demon bullet sponge, and the third time we interact with him, he gets put down like a sick dog? Not to mention all just to draw out Superman? So he's essentially just a stepping stone, huh? That's what this character is to you? A stepping stone? This guy who put your studio on the map? The sole reason why all of you are world renowned? You don't treat a character like that this disrespectfully. Everybody in their right mind would know something like this. Without him, every single one of you at Rocksteady would be unemployed. Which is what I hope the writing team is after playing this game. I don't mind that Arkham Batman has to die. I can accept that. But to do it in a manner that feels this rushed and this anticlimactic is nothing short of disrespectful. And everyone complaining about this pre-launch were completely justified. And that's not even bringing up that this was Kevin Conroy's last role as Batman before he tragically passed away. Now, nobody could have predicted that this would happen, but knowing that now that this is his last role, that is a really shitty way to end. A victim of a rushed second half. Absolutely disgraceful. <sighs> At the end of it all, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is yet another example of why forcing single-player studios to make live service games when they have no business making them is the worst thing you can possibly do. Because the struggle to make something that will keep players engaged for months and years with new content, updates, and all the other stuff you want to do is what your entire development time will be. And if you have never done this before and clearly don't want to do it, it ends up ruining other parts of your game. Like the story, writing, missions, actually everything. Rocksteady and Warner Brothers should learn a very valuable lesson from this. Because if you check the Steam numbers, nobody is playing it. 
In fact, at one point, there were more people playing Arkham Knight, a game from nine years ago. You know how sad that is? Everyone involved should see this as a failure, and it will be a failure, because if you think Warner Brothers is gonna let this game survive longer than four seasons at best, Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Frankly, it deserves to fail, because I don't exaggerate when I say this. I had more fun gagging and ungagging Harley Quinn in Arkham City than I did playing any part of this game's second half. Hey, I think Suicide Squad is a great game that will be a standard bearer for years to come. What are you? There were times in this video where I wanted to say this is the same studio that made the Mr. Freeze boss fight or the Clayface boss fight or this is the same studio that did X. But to be honest, this isn't the same studio. The founders left in 2022, and who knows how much turnover has happened since 2015. Because I can tell you one thing, those guys that were there in 2015 would never treat Batman like this, as well as any of the other Justice League members. So if that's the baseline, yeah, this isn't the same Rocksteady. And while I won't say that Rocksteady is dead or talk about the fall of Rocksteady, what will determine if I have that same opinion is if they see this as a wake-up call. They will have their work cut out for them with their next title, because it's gonna take a while for us to wash this taste out of our mouths. And they have no one to blame but themselves. Everyone was right. It was as we feared. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a 4 out of 10.